Hello, am I Neurodivergent Chapter 32 of 52? I'm Strun, like diagnosed ADHD, so autism and ADHD combined. And these videos are my week by week recap of my Neurodivergent Discovery Year last year. The last couple of weeks I've been doing a my two stories or my two narratives thing as I was going back through my life at this stage of my discovery year, helping a psychiatrist understand some of the struggles I'd had through my life after getting an autism diagnosis. Um, it's funny though, when I did this exercise, the first time it was only through the lens of autism. Uh, at this stage in summer 2022, the co-occurring ADHD was still only a possible. And Knowing it's a definite now, having both diagnoses, it's been like doing the whole looking back at my life from scratch with a new lens yet again, uh, which has been a bit full on at times. Um, my teens video last week was a pretty hard slog last week. It was like about a month ago at this point, um, but also very useful and cathartic because the bits that didn't make sense the first time around through just the autism lens kind of do make sense now with knowing both autism and ADHD are simultaneously present and have been all along. Um, I've talked about that fight and struggle between the two conditions of having both and that definitely got harder to deal with as I moved from childhood. Um, where I had quite a controlled environment to teens where things become became less predictable uh, and I became a bit more of a mess. So in keeping with that recapitulation theme, uh, I'm going to do the same thing with my 20s this week. First, the kind of rose-tinted, outwardly successful version of my 20s, the narrative I kind of tried to portray and project and kind of convinced myself I was having and then loop back and go through some of the troubles and challenges that being ADHD in your 20s, or at least in my 20s, obviously I only speak from my own experience, autism plus environment equals outcome. And I fully acknowledge I've had a pretty privileged life, all things considered. Um, but there's still not a huge amount out there on lived ADHD experience yet, uh, at least explicitly through that lens. It's, it's way more common than anyone's realised. So I'm hoping by putting my experiences out there, it helps shuffle the understanding of, of what it can be like to be undiagnosed ADHD through various life stages and why we need to, to get better at recognising, accommodating and letting people know it's okay to live authentically and not push themselves through that cheese grater to try and fit in and then beat ourselves up when we don't. Um, a thing I heard about modern adulting one time is that your 20s are now considered your finding yourself decade, your 30s your positioning decade, and your 40s your achieving decade, or something like that. Um, and your 50s you're consolidating. Um, so I'm not sure I found myself by the end of my 20s, but I definitely spent most of it looking. My 20s um, were pretty random and breathless in a lot of ways. And I'd say with the benefit of hindsight that my ADHD was in the ascendancy over my autism for at least most of my 20s before my autism came kind of crashing back as the dominant force in my 30s. Um, there were obviously many battles in this ongoing tussle the two have, but that would be the broad kind of being mentioned in dispatches summary I would give of it. Um, so yeah, anyway, my happy rose-tinted 20s. So I finished my teens, having dropped out of university after a pretty big burnout, and decided to go backpacking around America with a wee bit of money. My uh, grandma had left me when she died at Adventure Time. Um, I stayed in the States for around six months, um, so sort I'm of living my best life, greyhounding and Amtracking through almost every state. Writing a novel I thought was brilliant about an agoraphobic guy who forces himself to go out and experience the world and gets pulled into some deep, mystical, otherworldly nonsense. Um, it was called Dream Dream, a schizophrenic road movie. Um, it was, in retrospect, a pretty bad novel that never got finished. Um, I hooked up with a girl I'd known on my high school gap year in South Carolina. We got together 
declared undying love for each other. Um, capital G, great love number three or four, but shock, it was not to be. And I came home to Scotland a little bit heartbroken after, uh, well, getting dumped and told to go home, basically. Um, I came back to Edinburgh, um, dream dream, having morphed into a hundred different things before I realised I wasn't as great a writer as I'd maybe thought and ultimately gave up on trying to finish it. Um, I moved into a flat with friends, uh, I drank a lot, I got together with an awesome girl who might eventually marry um, in a relationship that actually somehow lasted for the first time and I moved to Paris with her in a cute little apartment in the 19th arrondissement while she studied at the Sorbonne. Um, these few months in Paris were some of the happiest I'd ever felt. I loved spending time with her. We took the piss out of each other, we took the piss out of the world. We laughed like there was no tomorrow. Um, I learned to cook. I improved slightly my very rudimentary French and petit peu. Um, I wasn't working. Uh, funny how that makes you happy. Um, I got obsessively into world history uh, for the first time making a, a really detailed decade by decade timeline to help me understand uh, the autism was, was still there. Um, I wrote the first book of what was a planned kids' fantasy series called Bobcat Through History. Um, book one was based on the epic of Gilgamesh and also integrated some of the more fantastical elements of my Dream Dream novel um, into the overarching story. There were these two kinds of elemental beings called the Ancient Promise and the Rogue Interloper and a bunch of manipulative time hoppers called the Synthesis. Um, anyway, not important. We uh, we watched films, drank wine, played pool, spent Valentine's Day in the Champs Elysees, not being able to afford to go anywhere, but loving it anyway. And um, it was a pretty idyllic time, and I yeah felt very happy and in love. I eventually came back to Scotland, um, tried and failed to get publishers to pick up on Bobcat through history. Got a job as a music and film reviewer for the Edinburgh Evening News, a, a real proper newspaper that actually paid me to write. My girlfriend moved up north to Scotland after she finished uni to study for a second degree. We moved in together in a cute flat in the centre of Edinburgh. We socialised and went to the pub and went to gigs with friends. I did various random jobs to sustain myself, um, continued to write for the newspaper, worked with my dad as a crossbone archery instructor, which was amazing to spend uh, time with him and kind of get to know him a bit. Um, I worked as a ghost tour guide for a while. I was also a dog's body for events management companies on big money corporate events. I became a film and TV extra and showed up in the background of, of various things. I wrote a film treatment called Paradise of the Saints about the Irish monks who quote unquote discovered America in the 6th century and uh, that was briefly picked up by a minor Hollywood studio but never went anywhere. Um, amidst all this kind of enjoyable chaos, I eventually got a night shift job as a press researcher, uh, basically reading the next day's newspapers for a media monitoring company. Um, yes, this is or used to be a job. This was the mid 2000s when insomniac night owls with a highlighter pen um, still did the work of computers. This night shift reading job was relentless, but it was a two weeks on, two weeks off working pattern, which gave me plenty of time and balance for my hobbies and hyper focuses, uh, and ultimately allowed me to move to the company's office in London with my girlfriend, who was by this stage ready to qualify as a lawyer. Uh, the company's quote, quote unquote London office um, was literally me and one other bloke overnight with some printers in a garage, um, but it helped me get a foothold in London life, which I did initially struggle with um, and find quite overwhelming. Um, but after a year of reading in a garage as a job, I decided to finally get serious and it was, yeah, I kind of decided it was time for me to grow up and make a difference in the world. Um, so I joined the Liberal Democrat Party that I still then thought was the answer to British politics, volunteered in their central press office for a bit in London's actual Westminster where the politics happens, which was exciting. Did a three-month political internship, started living by the self-help book Getting Things Done by Dave Allen. Got my CV in order and after a number of unsuccessful interviews somehow landed a job as a researcher with a Lib Dem MP working in the actual Houses of Parliament. So yeah, 
Uh, my 20s were a bit of a hot directionless mess, in short, but I broadly had a good time flailing around in the dark and had pulled it back towards something looking like sensible by the end of that decade. It was uh, it was a finding myself decade of sorts, uh, and in my head at this time I was back on track after some random enjoyable but directionless years. Living in London with an amazing girl I'd been together with for almost 10 years at this point, um, and now had a grown-up research job about to start in the House of Commons at the, the heart of British politics. Um, things were going weirdly great, and I finished out my 20s by proposing to my girlfriend in Paris in the rain on my 30th birthday. The world was my oyster, and my 30s were going to be um, this burning comet trail of finally fulfilling my potential. So, great, awesome. That was what I was projecting and kind of believed on a surface level. So now, same deal as the last two weeks, next up is my dissonant 20s, reflecting back on my life from a post-stress breakdown and double ASD and ADHD diagnosis perspective. So, yeah, um, back to the start. I dropped out of university to massive disappointment from my parents and like I said, decided to go greyhounding around America and write the dream dream novel with all my thoughts and ideas. Um, how can I not have seen there was something going on with me, a novel about a teenager with agoraphobia, creating a secondary personality for himself to push himself into going out and experiencing life, just, yeah, son, you've got AD ADHD, you basically do have two personalities, but you're fine. Um, I really wanted to show that I was quote unquote better than university and didn't need to finish it anyway because I was really creative and was going to be a really successful novelist, like, just watch me. But I just couldn't translate all the ideas I'd been having into a well-written book. I couldn't transition from notes and ideas to a coherent, well-written narrative. Um, I felt massively disappointed in myself that I'd dropped out of uni ostensibly to write a novel, then couldn't get that novel written. I also felt wildly overstimulated going to places like New Orleans and Tallahassee and trying to force myself to experience things like sleeping rough and voodoo ceremonies just so I could write about them in my book. I also fell in love for the third time and got a bit probably weirdly obsessed and fixated with this poor girl who then got a bit freaked out, or with the benefit of hindsight, didn't quite get some of my autism versus ADHD personality swings I talked about last time, the full-on ADHD stimulation seeking, followed by the autistic withdrawal, just really unpredictable and a bit unstable. Like, it really is no wonder how much it's starting to emerge. ADHD has been misdiagnosed as bipolar or BPD at times. And uh, yeah, it just dropped me after a few months of <clears throat> us slash me feeling like it was the start of something amazing and connected and wonderful. Um, I made up this lie to anyone who was interested, i.e. no one, uh, that my novel manuscript had been stolen and I was crushed by that. So after a few days of kind of tears and throwing pillows around in a motel room alone, I uh, flew home feeling completely destroyed and what, looking back, was pretty much... <clears throat> major autism burnout number three, um, and it would take months to climb back out of into this kind of nocturnal, day-sleeping, listless, numbing depression again. And I mooned around for a few years in my early 20s doing odd jobs, like working in a video shop, working in a bookshop, mainly feeling like a massive disappointment both to myself and to my parents, who clearly thought... I was very bright and was completely underachieving after having dropped out of university to do nothing, essentially. Um, yeah, I tried to write Bobcat through history, my kid's historical book, uh, and to my credit did actually finish it and sent it off to publishers, but there was no interest from any of them in publishing it because I pitched it as the first book of a series and I was an unproven author, so that went nowhere. Um, my parents 
who meant well, I'm not upset with them at all, encouraged me to move out and settle into a job. I lived with friends in a flat, worked uh, briefly after getting fired from a video shop for the Edinburgh Tourist Board, but that didn't last long either because I found it mind-numbingly boring and quit to be like a trainee cameraman for a TV thing, I think. It really all does kind of blur into a nonsense of random events at times. Uh, working for the tourist board in the first place <clears throat> came about entirely because my mum suggested it and I just blindly shrugged and said sure in the absence of any other plan and applied for it and knew how to kind of talk the talk to get the position and started but then very quickly felt bored slash overwhelmed, delete as appropriate and, and self-sabotaged it and ran away from it. Um, like I said, I started going out with my current partner by this point. I'd actually met her backpacking on the America road trip. Um, she was backpacking too. And we'd got on and stayed in touch and she came to visit and we just clicked. Things were just easy and relaxed with her in a way they never had been with anyone else. And we just very quickly became both boyfriend and girlfriend and best friends and what we used to call our, our clique of two. Uh, she invited me to Paris to stay with her while she studied, um, another disappearing act my parents were hugely disappointed with, um, <clears throat> but was one of the most perfect periods of my life. Uh, we went to Bruges in Belgium that winter, and I almost proposed, um, but chickened out at the last moment. Um, after that we did long distance for a bit until she finished uni, and then she moved up to Edinburgh to move in with me in a tiny flat in an old building. Um, but while I said it was idyllic in a lot of ways for me and trying to recreate how amazing Paris had been, I also found that period frustrating and she really wasn't happy there and we argued a lot and she used to say I was always locked inside my own bubble that she wasn't allowed into and basically living with me could be very lonely for the other person. Obviously in retrospect, I was just autistic and struggling in certain ways but no one knew that then. I knew that I loved her but I did freak out not having my own private space anymore or being allowed to do my random me things like stay up all night on the internet obsessing over whatever my latest interest or obsession or hyper focus was. It was it was my first time living with someone as a grown-up couple basically and um, we just weren't massively happy in Scotland the way we had been in Paris and I felt like I was failing as a boyfriend because she was so clearly miserable in the situation. I kept trying lots of random jobs, like writing reviews for a newspaper, trying to write a film script, but I just kept failing at all of it. Um, I worked as a tour guide for a few weeks and the perfectionism kicked in, so <clears throat> I learned an entire hour-long script off by heart really quickly, but then on my first actual tour with people I got, I guess, stage fright and blanked and literally walked away from my tour group and went and stood in a side street for about an hour and smoked and just pretended it hadn't happened and then never did another one of those tours. I did do other tours um, that were more factual and less performative. Uh, I did corporate events but detested having to be chatty and friendly with clients and just dreaded it and eventually concocted a uh, <clears throat> reason to quit that as well. I was just feeling like I was underachieving in every direction and couldn't convert the life I wanted to be living into the life I was living. Uh, and I went back to Dream Dream, my novel, and tried to pull it back into something coherent. I tried my hand at short stories and tried to get involved in the Scottish literary scene, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't happening. Um, it was around about this time my future mother-in-law pitched me as a frustrated writer to friends of hers involved in the peripheries of Hollywood. Um, we liaised, I shared some ideas I had which turned into a film treatment, but again it felt like I was being steered into something that wasn't 100% my vision, and I self-sabotaged uh, what in retrospect was an incredible opportunity. Uh, I resented the expectations that were being placed on me. I resented the production company wanting to be co-authors of my work. Um, I got really upset and defensive that I was being 
somehow taken advantage of and basically blew up the whole relationship and opportunity of an open door to write a Hollywood film script with actual legit industry partners in place, which is pretty bonkers. Um, the treatment was registered with the Writers Guild of America and everything, but never progressed past that first stage. And 100% because of me and whatever weird control things were going on with me that things have to be either just so or nothing at all. Um, I had so many ideas, but didn't even seem to know how to interact with people. And although parts of the exp exploratory journey were fun, my anxiety was gradually just ramping up in my 20s, and I just felt a bit shit at every aspect of life and didn't really understand why. I started a blog at one point when blogging was still quite new, trying to teach myself how life worked, basically. It was the most boring blog in the world. I think one of the posts was about how mortgages worked, just trying to make boring real life stuff interesting enough for me to engage with in some way, I think, but I couldn't do it and became just very, very depressed and withdrawn again. I think I stopped writing entirely or even really reading or trying to expand myself uh, intellectually around this time. And my focus became on kind of just, just getting by. Um, my girlfriend was getting really frustrated with all my different bitty jobs and me pinging from one thing to another and never knowing when she'd see me or not. So I ended up getting this night shift job I mentioned as a press researcher that was two weeks on, two weeks off, but at least regular and predictable, um, which also suited me too. It turns out I was really good at that kind of close reading attention to detail. And after a year in Edinburgh, when I said I was moving to London with my girlfriend uh, to my bosses. I was promoted to be their London night shift manager and got what I can only assume would have been my first pay hike. So the two of us moved to London and I continued the night shift research work there, but I was just basically really lonely working overnight in an office alone or with one other grumpy person and didn't know anyone in London and just felt completely lost there and far away from home. I remember a New Year's party that first year in London with my girlfriend's friends and just leaving the house for a breath of fresh air and walking around the streets on my own just waiting for it to be over so I could go home and sleep. I was having complete what I now know to be executive function issues as well like ignoring letters, letting them pile up. I got a court summons for unpaid council tax. Just felt disconnected from life and unable to make that connection with it. Uh, I'd go for walks in the city, but didn't like people walking too close to me, which tends to happen in London. Or we'd go for walks outside of London, but I'd hate having to make eye contact to say hello, which my partner said was a weird thing to get upset about. Um, I also had this weird sense of justice and fairness that I felt I needed to address, which eventually prompted trying to get back into politics. Um, all of these things, the people walking too close, the polite acknowledgement, eye contact, the sense of injustice, would all turn out to be massively common autism things. But again, no knowledge of any of this back then. Um, I just felt more and more kind of crushed into the ground as being this, this weird outsider that nothing worked for. And the sense, the sense of fairness thing in particular, social disparities were so much more obvious in London than they had been in Edinburgh. And the, the ADHD monster in me um, had thoughts of getting involved in the community and making a difference. I'm going to sneeze. Ah, excuse me. Um, what am I? Getting involved, making a difference. Um... Yeah, just kind of forging this new life for myself and being some kind of community champion. Um, my grandpa's maxim that I mentioned in the in one of the previous videos of 
all you can do um, is leave this world a better place than you found it. That was that was really with me at this stage as I tried to kind of find myself in London. I wrote a kind of mini political pamphlet, don't laugh, with my thoughts about how life is and how society should function, how there should be like two layers of society where you could dip in and out of money-making ventures to top up your finances, but but have a base layer of basic needs met, which was fundamentally universal basic income before I'd, I'd heard of it, where if you wanted to study or learn or just take time out for a period and, and live on the bare minimum, you could, and there would be a safety net there for that. And I called it, I called my pamphlet the Lethargy Manifesto. A, I was just being self-deprecating and minimising because I felt silly and highfalutin churning all this stuff out and b i was skirting very close to what would probably be a fourth major autism burnout at this point from trying to just get by in london uh, i was also really into the west wing tv show at this time and the idealism of it and my adhd monster thought i wanted to get into politics to put my ideas into action the press research job which had been going well completely degenerated when we did a big fancy trial for the UK government and recruited new staff to do it. And I had to A, train those new staff and B, have enough time to do my job well too. And it completely disrupted my routine. I was having to work too fast and work crazy long hours. I ended up getting really hostile with my bosses and was on the verge of getting sacked for behavioral issues. So. I looked for an overwhelm exit strategy, something that would become very common in my 30s um, as my professional life kind of accelerated. Um, I volunteered at the Lib Dem press office and parlayed that into a formal Liberal Democrat internship in Scotland, um, blitzed the Getting Things Done by Dave Allen um, self-organisation book. I mentioned that I might talk about in a future video that both helped me hugely and over time shredded me by trying to follow it too religiously um, and I'd kind of decided to, to live by that book and start achieving capital letters great things in life in my late 20s. Uh, after, after my internship I had several unsuccessful interviews with MPs in London, uh, sample feedback uh, being very intense, not a friendly, outgoing enough presence, uh, until one of them somehow stuck. So after a decade of what could charitably be called random shit, punctuated by short bursts of activity and long periods of withdrawal and depression, I was about to start my 30s working for an MP in the Houses of Parliament, um, ODHD, fun for all the family. But <clears throat> In all seriousness, if, if I had known about this and been kinder to myself about using the bursts of energy and activity and managing the bouts of withdrawal, I could have been so much happier living these years and actually enjoying them rather than constantly feeling I wasn't enough for myself or others. So anyway, lessons learnt, um, or maybe being learnt as I do these. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much 20s. Right, I'm going to do one more of these self-indulgent self-reflections on my 30s and early 40s uh, next time, and then uh, get back to regular programming, specifically on ADHD and how ADHD and autism combine to see out this little Discovery Year series. I'm not even going to say see you next Sunday at this point because these have got very sporadic these past few weeks, but thank you to anyone still watching. And I will be back with the next one of these at some point, hopefully still in 2023. Um, so yeah, thank you for sticking with me and see you next time. Cheers.